At the age of 31, I was and still am making Football Manager videos. But also at the age of 31, Fabian Herzeler has been announced as the new Brighton head coach for the 24-25 season after getting St. Pauli promoted to the Bundesliga. But who exactly is the American-born German? His tactics are very interesting to say the least. A playmaking centre-back, sometimes having no midfield, the job today is to tell you all about the coach and his tactics, how Brighton will look and of course the brilliant football manager 2024 tactic but I have a quiz. According to Transfer Market, from Brighton's current squad as of the 4th of July 2024, Fabian Herzeler could manage up to 6 players older than him without checking. Can you name them in the comment section? Let me know and let's get started. Born in Houston, Texas. Herzeler joined Bayern Munich's youth academy at the age of 11 and progressed through all of the club's youth teams. He spent most of his professional career in the lower divisions of German football, playing for Bayern Munich 2, 1899 Hoffenheim 2 and 1816 Munich 2. He retired as a professional player at the age of 23, but his coaching potential was evident even during his playing days. Emre Chan, his former Bayern Munich 2 teammate, predicted a great career as a coach for Herzeler. In 2016, while playing as a player coach at amateur club FC Pins, I, I, I know I'm going to butcher this, FC Pins Insred. <laughs> he also served as an assistant coach for Germany under 20 and the under 18 teams. Fast forward to 2020, Herzeler became the new assistant at St. Pauli, then took over as head coach at just the age of 29, making him one of the youngest second Bundesliga coach in history. Under his leadership, the team turned around their fortunes and went from relegation battlers to being promoted to the Bundesliga in 2024. Those achievements hadn't gone unnoticed and now, at just the age of 31, I'm 32 by the way, Herzeler was announced as the head coach for Brighton for the 24-25 season. Good luck to him. In Herzeler's first full season with St. Pauli, his team averaged 57% possession, according to Weisgau, which was the second highest in Germany's second division. Herzeler's use of his middle centre-back is what sparked a lot of interest in their in-possession tactics. The team started with a 3-4-3 formation and then transitioned into a back four. This is different to what many clubs in Europe do, as they often transition from a back four to a back three. Eric Smith, the middle central defender moved into a pivot role early during the build-up play. Regardless of who plays in that middle centre-back position, their task is to move into the pivot position. In the 23-24 season, Herzeler's goalkeeper played a crucial role in the team's deeper build-up, seeing a lot of the ball and often retaining for St. Pauli. With Smith transitioning into the pivot, a diamond shape would be created, positioning the goalkeeper at the base, the middle centre-back Smith at the tip and the two other centre-backs on either side of the diamond. This tactical adjustment proved to be a key aspect of St. Pauli's central overload and numerical advantage from playing out from the back. By overloading the central areas, they can now bypass a press in various ways. Look to play through a press or thanks to the wide wing backs, they have opportunities to build around the opposition. The genius of the diamond is that the opposing winger often wants to help their teammates press in the middle and then that often leaves Herzeler's wing backs open and has space to attack. Herzeler has also used a 4-1-5 formation during the season for the low build-up. In this setup, the initial pivot players in the 3-4-3 formation will be positioned very high, leaving just that middle centre back in the CDM position. This creates large spaces in the midfield and that is exactly the aim create a big space in midfield for both teams which then allows the wing backs for Herzeler to move into the open space to support the attack or for a player in the attacking five to drop back into that open space. St. Pauli tend to have many players centrally to create an overload. This is especially true during the higher build-up where the emphasis shifts from fixed positions to creating dynamic connections between the players. To help with this, there is always a player position high and wide on the side where the ball is, aiming to stretch the opposition's back line, while the rest of the team works to create numerical advantages in the midfield areas. They look to combine through short passes using one-twos, passing up back and through or finding a third player to pass to. 
This setup also creates good conditions for counter pressing, allowing for more players to quickly press the opponent when possession is lost. St. Pauli striker, usually Eggestein, drops during the attack, further increasing the central presence. When the striker drops, there are more ways of beating the opponent's defence. They can pass the ball to the striker who can then find an attacking midfielder in the pocket for that up back through combination or play a one touch pass out to the winger. But if a centre back presses up on the striker, spaces opens up behind. When that happens, St. Pauli will exploit that space with runs from the attacking midfielders. Their midfield numerical superiority usually means that at least one of those attacking midfielders will be open, creating conditions for central players to have time and space on the ball to turn or to thread passes through the lines. As a result of this central overload, St. Pauli then often created scoring opportunities through the wider areas and by crossing. Opposing teams usually defend tightly in the middle to stop St. Pauli's central overload, so St. Pauli could break down teams by crossing. They crossed the ball 14.89 times per 90 minutes, which is the fourth highest in the league. Again, the genius of the middle centre back moving forward means that both initial CDMs can attack the box. Fabian Herzeller implemented a defensive strategy at St. Pauli that demonstrated a high level of organisation and intensity playing a key role in enhancing the team's defensive solidity. When necessary, they looked to high press but they did favour mid-blocks when defending. When it comes to their defensive organisation, the team switches to a 5-2-3 setup, similar to the defensive tactic seen by Oliver Glasner who has greatly influenced Herzeller. The five defenders provide a strong base while the two midfielders participate in one-on-one -on -one battles. When pressing and when the ball is played out wide by the opposing team, St. Pauli's defensive structure dynamically changes. The defensive line of five adapts as the attacking wingers move wider and deeper, creating a temporary 5-4-1 formation. This rapid adjustment enables St. Pauli to promptly create a numerical advantage around the ball, exerting pressure from different angles. St. Pauli's midfield and attacking units coordinate to form a five-man block. This alignment effectively restricts central passing lanes, making it challenging for the opposition to navigate through the centre of the pitch. During the attack and pressing phase, players are required to actively confront and challenge their opponents, with a centre back or two of them also looking to jump from their defensive line. This refined and aggressive mid to high pressing system employed by Herzeller has played a pivotal role in enhancing the defensive stability for St. Pauli and played a massive role in their promotion but that wraps up the tactical analysis make sure you go and check the credits in the description as well but for now what we are going to do before checking that fm tactic we're going to do what we usually do these days we're going to recruit for brighton smart recruitment To help gather an idea of what exactly is needed or wanted at Brighton, I had to check the transfer rumours on Sky Sports News and also on on X or Twitter. It seems that Matt Weefer is on his way to Brighton. If he's not, it doesn't matter. I've pulled him in because we're looking for DMs. Anyway, he popped up on my shortlist. He played 32 games for my Brighton or Herzeller's Brighton, scoring four goals and five assists. Looking at the squad, they got some great attacking talents and apparently they're looking for more attackers. I don't know how they're going to fit all of these players in this system, but there are some areas that I think Brighton should be looking at. So we are looking at a centre-back, a ball-playing profile, preferably right-footed because we do have Igor who can play on the left-hand side, but also Lewis Dunk prefers to play on the left-hand side of a back two so he can play on the left side of a back three as well but we are looking for a ball playing defender so someone comfortable good ball progression data also using my eye for the eye test as well and yeah just an all good round bloke or all good round central <laughs> defender i then looked at the right wing back situation there was only Tarek lamptey really you've got Solly march as well i almost called him mark march no idea why so i am looking for an attacking wing back profile in real life they are rumored to get Sugarawa. remember he was actually the right back that we bought in our Manchester United rebuild so a bit boring if we added him into Brighton in this one so they might go for Shigarara but we are looking for a right wing back who has some good attacking output and then lastly a central midfielder there can be some outgoings Pascal Gross, Jakob Moda, Adam Lallana's already gone so we are looking for a central midfielder that was also an area where you could say Brighton could have improved in last year. 
Starting with the centre backs, we've got some very interesting names on this list like Diakate, Jacob Greaves as well at Hull City. Nagalo, I believe there's some real in real life interest in Nagalo, but the centre back that I went for was a centre back called Vital at Internacional. He's a decent centre back. You can see on Football Manager as well. I haven't come across him on Football Manager and well, I've, I might be signing him more often. He's actually a decent, well-rounded centre back like I asked for. So number one was Vital. Look at the smile on the lad. Moving on to the right wing back, and I should state as well, we are looking for some of the unknown players. So someone like Shigarawa has a bit of reputation. Dedic and Vanderson as well, they have a bit of reputation. So we are looking for someone sort of unknown. We've got the right wing back at Coventry, who is actually very, very decent. Villadsen as well at Norseland, but the right wing back that I went with, Juan David Mosquera. He plays in USA, so there is some sort of American link up with Herzella. I guess <laughs> but again he's a bit of that unknown player he's a right wing back very decent in real life he likes to get further forward he doesn't just stay out in those wider areas as well he can make underlapping runs he can play a bit in the central areas I really like him in real life hopefully he gets a move in real life but for now in football manager he plays for Brighton as our backup to Tarek Lamptey and Solly Marsh. So that leaves us with the CDM. Again, some fantastic names on this list. Angelo Stiller. I'm leaving him. I'm saving him because I've added him into... I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you, but it's for a different video. We've got Loppy from Almeria. Mandela Keita at Antwerp. I really love him. You can see we've got Max Wife for hair as well. But the player that we went with, his name is Marcel Ruiz, currently playing in Mexico. And check me out, I actually think I'm recruiting for Brighton, going to Mexico and finding these hidden gems. He actually looks like a pretty decent player on FM. Plays no through balls. I mean, looking at the data, plus the eye test, that's a lie. He only did manage to play eight games for us. In Football Manager, there was still Beleba, Billy Gilmore, Max Wafer, of course. I think even James Milner, sometimes I use auto pick and those players got a priority over Marcel Ruiz. As I was creating a tactic and finding players, Brighton went and bought this player, apparently Malik Yaqui. So I also got myself a bonus player. Just in case he does become really good, remember you heard him here first, Karim Dermain. He plays his football in the Belgium second tier. I mean, it says he plays for Feyenoord, but he plays his football in real life in the Belgium second tier currently. So again, if you hear his name in the future, remember, you heard it here first. But now it's time to look at the Fabian Herzella tactic in Football Manager. Or you. Yeah, you, you, you. Make sure you press that like button. It's just there. It's so easy and it helps this channel out a lot. Also, please check out the Patreon if you want to support, if you have considered supporting the channel. Patreon is a great place to go. I didn't want to mention this because Y Scout is actually something that I need, but I am paying a £184 monthly subscription. So every little help from any of you guys will be hugely appreciated. But now let's check out the tactic. And of course, we can start with the player roles. In goal, we have the sweeper keeper on attack. We need him to be a part of the build up play. Come and help us build up from the back, but also helps us create that diamond shape. If our libero can move just forward out there, then our diamond will be formed with the libero, the two centre backs there, and then the goalkeeper while our DMs does press forward. So we do have a ball playing defender as our left side of centre back. As discovered, we have a libero on defend in the middle, and then the right side of centre back is a central defender taking more risks. The double pivot, the left side, we've got a Segundo Volante tackling harder, marking tighter as well. So we get that one-on-one -on -one battling in midfield and then move into channels. His midfield partner, defensive midfielder on support, practically the same, but with get further forward and no, move into channels. The wing backs, they're both wing backs on support. The left wing back, take more risks, dribble more, sit more narrow. And then the right wing back has crossed more often rather than dribble more. So they're a bit different. I didn't want two people doing the exact same things, basically slightly different in possession. Also, when we are playing away from home against the United, against uh, even Aston Villa, they are difficult to beat. Make sure you do change this wing back to defend. If you download the tactic, you will get both versions. Moving into the attack, left-hand side, Matoma. We've got the inverted winger on attack, roaming from his position, sit more narrow, tackle harder now. I would say this from here, from now, 
I couldn't get great performances from the wingers. I did mention in the comment section with a couple of people that it, this was a struggle and I'm talking nearly a whole week and recently I've got it to work as I wanted it to but the wingers performances and their ratings just aren't great so if you can ignore it you can ignore it. On the right hand side we've got the winger on attack and then lastly up top we have that complete forward doing just about a bit of every little thing. So now for the team instructions in possession, our mentality will be on positive. Our attacking whip is set to narrow. This should help us create those central numerical overloads. Approach play though, when we are starting to attack and progress past that or into that final third, then we start to hit the flanks where we can cross the ball, but also have those wide combinations, passing directness on shorter and tempo on slightly higher in transition we are going to counter press and counter while looking to distribute the ball to the center backs again just so we can build up from the back and then start to move forward and create those numerical overloads rather than constantly i'm um, the goalkeeper does kick the ball long they do a bit of that brighton thing where the wingers stay high and wide and the goalkeeper just boom, over the opposition's defensive line but we don't want constant long kicks and a game of transition we want to build up from the back and then create those numerical overloads in midfield lastly we are operating with a mid block and then the defensive line is on higher uh, more often trigger press prevent the short goalkeeper distribution get stuck in and also trap outside force play on the outside make sure those central areas are tight compact and difficult to play through and that there is the completed version the away version is practically the same i don't believe the second of volante moves into the channels no more i removed that and also removed get further forward with the defensive midfielder like mentioned earlier the wing back is now on the fend in possession our passing directness is in the middle but so is our tempo out of possession everything is the exact same set pieces just in case you missed me speaking about it in my previous video just in case you didn't even watch my previous video this is what i do for set pieces the first question will be player marking then i don't want no post no post defend the box or make sure it's fairly defensive on set pieces i want to aim for the near post again defensive tran uh, defend transition so attacking corners we're still looking to defend that transition i have been caught out by it and it has been annoying so defend that please and then in swinger as well and then voila my set piece coach has made me the perfect set piece sis routine <laughs> but that there is the tactic and everything you need to know about the tactic we can move into the stats and results data voila this was a very good season for Brighton. We played 38 games, winning 23, drawing 10 and losing five. Those five losses away to Arsenal, Southampton, Bournemouth. We lost to Arsenal at home and we also lost to Manchester City at home. But we got our revenge against Manchester City, beating them in the... I hate when the game does this. There we are. I had to skip a day. In the FA Cup, we got our revenge on Manchester City. Highlight starts with a throw in. Esther Pinian throws it to Van Heck. What the heck? Gives the ball to Jao Pedro. He's going to cut inside. Oh, lovely stuff there. Five. Oh, lovely football on the edge of the box there by Brighton. And for the second goal, here, we're on the counter-attack. Let's go back to where we won the ball. So here's John Stones. Look at us in our mid-block. Look how deep we are. There we are. But Leba works hard in that 1v1 battle. Matoma on the ball. Drives forward. Almost. That, that's the two lucky goals. Two lucky goals. But it doesn't matter. We won the FA Cup. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the second round by QPR out of all teams. In the league, we had the third most goals. Fewer shots against, we are fifth, but look at the four teams above us. I mean, Tottenham and Man United are below us. Most shots for, we are in second. Most possession, we are in seventh. But most dribbles, not in the top 10, but we don't really care about that. Most clean sheets, we are sixth. And for the fewest conceded, we are fifth. Fourth. High intensity sprints, it seems that we love that. We will create a chance or two. Highest expected goals for as well. We come in second just behind Manchester City. But the squad stats, Ferguson scored 21 goals. Matoma got 12 and Jao Pedro got 12. I mean, I said the wingers didn't perform great. Matoma got double figures of goals, so I can't complain much. Incencio got five goals. So that's where the numbers drop off. <laughs> we went from Jao Pedro on 12 to Julio Incencio on five for the assist we've got Espinina Nan Nan on nine and Sensio on eight Baleba on seven Tarek Lamti on seven and Matoma on five you know what chat you know what people 
I, I can't even talk no more. I've been talking for so long. I don't know how long this recording has been gone on for, but it's come to an end. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it too. My name is RDF. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully you guys will like this button. That'll be hugely appreciated. If you want to support the channel, make sure you check out the Patreon. I love you guys. Thank you for the support. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Boop.